Today, guys, we are building the ultimate kibble farm. This all-in-one design is built for easy crafting and maximum production. Let's jump right into it. First up, guys, we need to pick a tree, preferably one near a water source. And once we've done that, we're going to go ahead and place our tree sap taps in the tree. This is actually going to help you line up the front and back of the base we're going to build. Now, when we place this tree platform, we need to do it so that these taps are pretty well centered between these giant triangles on the platform. Now, it's not going to be perfect. We just want to do the best we can to line it up. Now it's time to place our foundations. Line up your first square foundation with the edge of this inner circle here, just like this. Now, you can start on any triangle on the big platform. It really doesn't matter, but we're going to start here, and then what we're going to do is we're going to expand outwards. So we're going to go one square, three triangles, one square, three triangles, all the way around the tree, and then we're going to repeat this process outward until the platform is covered in foundations. This design maximizes the usable space. It should look like this. Now we need to use these taps and the foundations in combination to figure out where's the front and where's the back. We need to find the two taps closest to each other that are hopefully in line with these three square foundations on the outer edge. You can see these three foundations here are what were pretty much lined up with these two tree sap taps. And these taps are closer than the other ones around it. This means it's going to be the back of our base. You can see mine isn't exactly perfect, but that's okay. There's a little wiggle room. Now, go ahead and destroy the two taps on the opposite side. And then we're going to place triangle foundations on the inner ring, just like this. But do not put these in between the taps. Now, we have the front of our base and the back of our base. It's time to build. Head over to the edge of the three foundations on the side of the tree with no taps. This is where we're going to start placing our stone walls. First, I'll create an indent for an entryway, leaving these two spots here open for door frames. Next, I'm going to place walls all along the edge, indenting one every time I get to the first square foundation on each side. So you can see this little area here. We're going to actually create these little cutout balconies. Continue along the edge to the second set of square foundations. And this time, we're going to indent it towards the tree. All the way over, we're going to close it up just like this. Now, as you can see, zoomed out, this is the basic shape for our base. Now, we're going to go ahead and place our door frames, and then go ahead and demolish these three walls on the left side of the tree, the left side of the base. This is going to be an opening for some of our larger dinos, and just an easier way to get in and out from the back to the front. Now, in the back, we're going to place stone handrails starting on the edge of that square foundation where we left off with walls. We're going to do four rails here. We're going to skip some. And then we're going to do three at the edge, and then four more on that far side, leaving two openings that we're going to fill in later. Now let's head back up to the front, and we're going to place our greenhouse walls. Now, I use these as windows. I like all of the natural light, so I'm going to actually place these greenhouse walls for our second layer. And then one more row of stone walls on top of that for the third and final layer. I went ahead and placed railings on our balconies and then headed to the back to build our greenhouse. Now, the greenhouse, guys, is going to fit along the back of this platform. So place your greenhouse walls around the back of the base. Try to look for this pattern here. It's similar to like a lima bean shape or something like that on the floor. But you can see it's pretty symmetrical. They should be stacked too tall. That way we get the full 300% greenhouse effect. And then we'll go ahead and fill in the ceilings with squares and triangles, just like this. This will be perfect for our kibble crops. A great building tip, guys, is to use fence foundations and pillars to detail your designs. Typically, pillars will only snap to the center of a foundation, but... Using a fence foundation like this creates a new set of snap points at the ends. I can place them along the edges around my build, 
and I can place pillars now along that base to accent the build further. This keeps the design symmetrical and now the greenhouse is more detailed. I also took it one step further and placed them at the edges of this opening in the back to frame our large doorway or entryway to our back patio. At this point, we are ready to close up the top of our base. Again, we're just going to use square and triangle ceilings of any kind to follow the pattern on the ground. Over here on this right side, we are going to leave one roof, one square, one triangle open. And this is going to be our staircase to the first floor. But go ahead in the meantime and finish closing up the rest of the roof all the way up to and around the tree. This is how it should look so far, guys. Let's do a row of stone handrails along the edge of the entire roof. All the way around. Yeah, that looks really, really good. Now, let's go ahead and do this staircase. Two stairs coming down from that roof. Very simple. And then we're going to use a simple ceiling to turn the stairs in a different direction. I don't want to walk into the wall. So we're going to place one here and then the final set of stairs down on this side so that we can actually walk into the room. Now, this base needs electricity. I'll go ahead back upstairs and I'm going to put a generator on the roof here in the center, pretty much lined up with the front door. That's where we want our power dropping down into our base. I went ahead and dropped an electrical cable, like I said, and now we're ready to plug in our refrigerators. Next step, guys, is setting this place up for kibble production, and we are going to need a bunch of equipment. I went ahead and placed seven fridges around the front of the tree, just like this, and then on the right-hand side where we have a gap, I placed a chem bench and a vault. The chem bench, of course, can still reach and plug in, and then on the left-hand side, this area is just big enough for our fabricator. Now, if we turn around, the alcove right across from the fabricator is a perfect size for an indie grinder. I put furnaces, a smithy, and storage boxes in the second alcove. And then finally, a grill, preserving bins, and a cooking pot in the last alcove. Pretty much, guys, the main base is set up and ready to use. But we still have a few more things to finish before we're ready for kibble. Let's go ahead and place our beehives directly on the platform in this gap here that we left between the sap taps. They will not sit on foundations, guys. That's why we need to leave this gap. And we can fit four hives, which is perfect for all the honey that we're going to need. Now, go ahead and set up your composters and your crop plots so that we have something to plant with. And then finally, we'll set up our irrigation. I place two irrigation pipes on the far side of the greenhouse, and this is where we're going to set up our industrial cooker for our kibble making. Make sure to connect this, guys, to a water source, and then, of course, to your greenhouse irrigation pipes so that we're ready to tap and irrigate our plots. Finally, we head upstairs to set up our May wings for our kibble egg production. And that's it, guys. The kibble farm is ready to go. We have our crops, eggs, honey, and sap already stocking up and filling the fridges. Kibble making and taming has never been easier. I love this treehouse design, and I hope you do too. I'll see you guys in the next one.